at my uh, age, having failed retirement three times, I have less interest in extraordinary romance than I used to, but I do know a little bit about uh, AI and patient data. And so I'm going to start really with the conclusion, given that we're going to try and stick to the time, which is um, many chronic diseases present episodically. That's true of something like diabetes. There's an exacerbation that might be diet related where suddenly you, you've got a problem, even though you chronically have that problem. It only presents with a given environmental stimulus. That turns out to be true for many chronic diseases. The one I'm gonna talk about is the most common chronic disease in the United States and the world, that's migraine. Uh, I see there's a number of, of women on the screen. One out of four of you chances are have had migraines at one time or another. Um, and so there's a billion people worldwide. There's 40 million people in the United States. And we thought it would be uh, valuable through a company called SensorRx that I helped found to see if uh, we could help uh, migraine sufferers develop better ways of keeping track of their migraines because the, uh, the treatment is based almost in, entirely on the number of incidents that you have in a given month. If you've got more than three or four, really you're not on the right medication. And the problem with using patient recall for the history is if your provider asked you, well, how many migraines have you had in the last three months? It's a, basically a random number generator. No one has I, any idea how many they've had. And so that's one of the reasons why it's been hard. We realized that if, if you had a way to enter those incidents in real time using your ubiquitous smartphone to which we're all umbilically connected at this point, uh, then that would allow better uh, diagnosis and treatment. And really the bottom line that I'm going to tell you is that works uh, if, you, if you basically create your own little diary and you have a way to get that information into the cloud, in a HIPAA secure cloud, and then into your physician's uh, medical record uh, via a, uh, an integrated uh, HL7 connection with Epic or Cerner or whatever your least favorite uh, EMR is, then uh, that does allow you to reduce your number of headaches by a pretty dramatic amount, something like 40% for thousands of patients that we've worked with. But the more interesting thing is because people are walking around with their cell phones and entering these data all every time they have a headache, there's an if the patient allows, there's an enormous amount of environmental data. For example, migraines are triggered in about 60% of people by some kind of change in uh, surrounding ubiquitous weather. Uh, those of you who live in St. Louis know that if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes and it's gonna change. So, uh, so what we wanted to learn and sort of the last slide I'll show you is that yeah, this actually works, that if you can keep track of enough information and build that into a neural network, automated machine learning um, algorithm that we've developed and patented for, um, for about 30% of the people that we monitor, we can predict a headache that they're going to have 24 hours in advance of when they have it with 90% positive predictive value. In principle, there's a third way to, to treat uh, these kind of chronic diseases, which is a preemptive treatment. If you know when it's gonna happen and you know with 90% plus probability that it's gonna happen, you can take the medication ahead of the event and the event never happens, uh, which is what I call making pain optional. Um, so as I said, it's the world's most common chronic disease. Uh, generally patients are pretty unhappy with their treatment. And that's because there's just a low information for the physician doing the diagnosis and treatment. So if in, if in real time, you provide diagnostic data to the physician that can go directly into your EMR, you dramatically improve care. And then if you couple that with uh, automated machine learning and artificial intelligence, you can really revolutionize care. Next, <laughs> this, this feels too much like an ad. All that I'll say is that, uh, is that 
It's a free app. You can download it on the App Store or Google Play if you actually get migraines. And what it allows you to do is create a digital diary in real time. And there's a lot of stuff that goes into, with any of these things, uh, optimizing the user interface and the user experience. Because what we learned, somewhat to my surprise, is if you ask people to interact for more than a minute, uh, utilization drops way off, probably because they're having a migraine and it's not very fun to stare at a screen. Um, so we got this down to about 12 to 15 seconds of interaction time by optimizing the interaction. Basically, you pull up the app, you hit something that says I'm having a migraine, here's my pain level, and here's what I'm taking uh, to try and deal with it. That's all you have to do. It takes about 12 seconds. And that creates a record for the physician that when they look back, they can say, oh, you told me you were having three or four migraines a month, but it turns out you're actually having 15. So I'm going to dramatically change your medication. And that makes people better. Next. Uh, that's what the platform looks like. It, uh, I am blessed with some really great UI people. So they're constantly changing this platform. This is what it looked like last month. If you look next month, it'll be prettier next. And then sort of the key thing is this interaction between the data, the, the patient and the provider. So the, the patient is inputting the data that goes to a HIPAA protected cloud. We use Amazon, but it works equally well uh, with Microsoft. Uh, then that those data are automatically downloaded to your EMR record so that the physician can look at this within workflow. That may sound like a small thing, but uh, those who are physicians know that you, you basically have no time to leave workflow, go look at some other site somewhere and come back. So having it within workflow turns out to matter. It also turns out to, with new, um, with new guidance from CMS, allows that review of the record to be billed uh, to insurance. And that suddenly makes, the patients were always pretty compliant, but it suddenly makes the physicians really compliant, which really matters next. This is a technical thing. Most, every, every one of us have all kinds of apps on our phones and you use them once or twice. And then you say, that's kind of boring. Uh, for this to work, you kind of have to, you have to collect about 90 days worth of data and so the important thing is instead of losing 95% of your patients in seven days, um, you've still got three quarters of the people that downloaded this using it 90 days later. That creates enough data to create a training set for machine learning, which we'll get to next. And this just shows that, it, that, it, that just keeping the diary all by itself works. If you look at the initial headache days uh, in green and you look at, at what they're like um, after the first change in treatment based on that record, they drop off dramatically because your prescription has changed. 80% of, of patients find out they're on the wrong script. And when they get on the right script, not terribly surprisingly, they do better. Uh, this is particularly important because over the last two years, there's been a revolution in the uh, development of new drugs for the treatment of migraine, one of which I'll say something about next. So now we're to the, the extraordinary romance of patient data and uh, artificial intelligence. So one of the problems with the way medicine is traditionally done is that uh, drug approvals and utilization are based on population um, responses. You look for you look for p values. You make sure that the that the effect on the entire population is is statistically meaningful. But really, all of us for our own health don't care about n equals one hundred thousand. We care about n equals one. We just want to know what's going to help us. And so uh, if you have enough data, you can create an individualized training set for every single individual so that Sally's migraines may be very different than Susan's um, and have different exacerbations and different weather triggers and 
different responses to a monthly cycle and different responses to stress. And so if you can input all of those data for a given individual, uh, what we found is after about somewhere between 15 and 25 incidents, we've got a good enough uh, robust algorithm for those for whom we can predict. And there's many we can't. We have no idea what, what triggers your headache. Some people, for example, are triggered by perfume. They don't have a phone that can smell the uh, surrounding environment. So we just miss those. Uh, and what we're looking for here is a statistical thing called a positive predictive value that has a very high penalty for making wrong guesses. So what it basically says is that 90% of the time we make a right guess and 10% and or less do we make a wrong guess. Uh, and that gives the uh, prescriber high confidence that if you're going to take a, if you're going to take a medication, it will actually help you. Next. This is an incredibly busy slide. And if anybody's really interested, you can send me an email and I can explain it. But basically what it says is that for two thirds of the patients we've looked at, and we've looked at thousands with hundreds of thousands of headaches, uh, that about two thirds of people who get migraines are weather sensitive, but they're sensitive to very different things. There's sort of a uh, belief that barometric pressure causes my changes in barometric pressure cause migraines. That's true for about 20% of people. But if you're one of those people where barometric pressure is not the important thing for you, and you were to take a medication based on that, for 80% of people, it would, it would actually not be helpful, and therefore potentially harmful. So um, we looked at lots of weather events, and it turns out that you know, for one individual, it might be wind speed. For another, it might be rain. For another, it might be relative humidity, et cetera, et cetera. Next. Uh, so this gets into the idea that I started with in the conclusion that uh, there's two traditional ways to treat a disease like migraine right now. Uh, you get a headache and you take an acute treatment. For most people, that's a triptan. Uh, triptans have the challenge that if you take too many, you get rebound headaches. Uh, it's very similar to anyone who's taken decongestants for more than several days. When you stop the decongestant, you're more stopped up than ever. And it, that's also true of, of taking a triptan to uh, mitigate a headache. So acute treatments have their problems. The alternative is you take a preventative treatment. So you're you're taking something that either lasts for a very long time uh, and that has its own challenges, or you're taking something every day and you don't need it every day. Maybe you need it five times a month. So taking a preventative every day has its own challenges. The, the most interesting possibility would be a preemptive therapy where if you know when you're gonna have a headache and you know ahead of time, you only take the pill for that day where it's, where it's going to be important for you. Uh, next. And there's a lot of reasons to believe that preemptive therapy works for some people um, whose migraines are linked almost like clockwork to changes in uh, hormonal fluctuations right before the beginning of a menstrual cycle. Uh, their doctors have traditionally, if they have a good doctor, they've traditionally prescribed a preventative that you take right before uh, the beginning of your cycle. And that's really all you have to keep track of then. For most people, it's more complicated than that because it's not only the hormonal fluctuation. It's it That by itself won't necessarily trigger a migraine, but a hormonal fluctuation plus a change in weather or a hormonal fluctuation plus an increase in stress may be enough to push your, um, your um, nerve system above the threshold where the migraine kicks in. Next. So I'm going to end this sort of quick overview, um, and then I, I guess we'll be able to go into discussion. So the last slide is going to be a funny looking slide, but basically on the um, x-axis is the positive predictive value, that is our ability to predict the likelihood that you're going to have a headache within 24 hours 
and on the um, on the y-axis is the percentage of folks with that predictive value. And so the bad news is that for two thirds of the people, uh, we don't know what your information is. There's a really interesting way uh, that we can discuss to uh, be much more effective for many more people. It turns out that even if people can't understand it, they're extraordinarily good at self-prediction. So if they, if they think that there's a 90% chance that they're gonna have a headache 24 hours from now, turns out they're really likely to have a headache. And so if you build that in, you can move some of these people from the 70 or 60% or group into the 90% group. Uh, but the good news is that for about a third of the patients, uh, we can predict better than 90% of the time where they're going to have a headache ahead of time. Uh, and so that opens a window for completely changing the paradigm for treatment uh, with the caveat that from the FDA's perspective, this now is a diagnostic, your phone has become a diagnostic device. And therefore, it's subject to all kinds of uh, regulatory uh, processes and scrutiny. So the reason that you can't do this right now is we're going to have to spend the next couple of years working with the FDA to figure out how to make this available to people. But as an example of using machine learning artificial intelligence, to change the paradigm for treatment, uh, I simply offer it as an interesting example for thought, discussion, argument. Uh, look forward to learning from uh, folks whose expertise is broader than mine, how we could best make something like that available to patients because this won't work simply for migraine. It'll basically work in principle for many diseases, most chronic diseases present episodically. And so if you have an idea of, of how those might link to environmental stimuli, we're, we're quite confident we're doing some work now that shows that this is equally likely to work for something like uh, IBS and related exacerbations. It will probably work for other uh, complex chronic diseases and with that, I will simply end.